BBOR Black Box Online Radio coming to you from West Virginia. Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. And welcome to BBOR, the home of True Crime Talk Radio and your premier destination for unsolved mysteries, criminal psychology, and exploring the dark side of cyberspace. My name is Ned DeHaan, and I am your host as well as the creator of Astro Psych 400 here on YouTube, and regular contributor to the Zodiac Killer channel. And a great way to support these shows is just by listening to some more content. But you can also go over to Amazon.com and have a look at the book Killer on a White Horse, written by me, Ned Dahan. It is a novel, murder mystery, inspired by the Zodiac Manson connection, but it is indeed fictional. However, who doesn't love a good mystery? And there is always the Teespring page. Feel free to check out some of the merchandise. And remember, being weird is not a crime. Let the show begin. This episode of Black Box Online Radio is brought to you by Rep Sports and Ray's Energy. Are you a fan of energy drinks, protein shakes, and health foods? Well, I sure am. I use the stuff almost every single day. They sell Ray's Energy products at my local gym, but you can have them shipped to your home. Use the coupon code NED075, that's N-E-D-075, for discounts applied at the checkout. The link is in the description box. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. Just a couple of quick announcements before we begin. The first is, I would like to give a big thank you to everyone who listened to yesterday's episode on the murder of George Young, a case that I had never talked about before on this channel. Much appreciated to all those who tune in, as well as anyone who hits the like button, subscribes, all of that stuff. It really helps out the channel. The next announcement is that tomorrow I will be doing the first episode in a multi-part series on the suspicious death of Diane Linkletter. She passed away on October 4th of 1969, and there are many theories about what happened to her. There's a very simple explanation that some people offer that she committed suicide, and that's the end of the discussion. And then there are other people out there who believe that she was murdered by the Zodiac Killer. So what really happened? I'm going to begin the first episode of that one tomorrow called Zodiac Killer, The Link Letter Connection. So please feel free to tune in. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, now's a great time to do so, so you can follow along with all of these true crime discussions if you're curious about this stuff. And to get into today's topic, this is one that I had been debating on doing for quite some time, because as I said from the introduction, this was mostly a true crime channel for many years now. And I like to talk about different aspects of the true crime world. And the Steve Wilco show gets into true crime for sometimes. Now, they in the recent years, Steve has been doing a lot more with cheating, infidelity, stories of people in troublesome relationships. But the early seasons heavily focused on very criminal aspects, including stories of abuse, as well as people who were simply mistreating their partners, sometimes their children. Steve Wilkos is, of course, perhaps famous for not only hosting the Steve Wilkos show, but also he was the head of security for Jerry Springer for many years. And in an interview, he said that while he was doing that, he was also a police officer in Chicago and would um, do Jerry Springer during the days and then the evening shift he would be working as a police officer, and he did that for several years until it was uh, no longer um, feasible for him to do both at once. He even said once he came home from work covered in blood and his wife was saying, why on earth are you doing this? And he had tried some other things. For a while he was with MCW, Maryland Championship Wrestling, but really there was this time when he started hosting the Jerry Springer show as a fill-in, and people noticed that he was actually pretty good at it. And he was much better at having a serious, more formal, as well as authoritative tone than somebody like Jerry Springer, who, by his own admission, just said the Jerry Springer show was about highlighting outrageousness. So then Steve Wilkos got his own talk show, 
And when Jerry Springer was on the Howard Stern show, he said very clearly that his show is mostly a joke. What Steve Wilkos did is a real talk show, and he actually provides real support and guidance. And before I say anything about being critical or dropping any type of pushback, I believe that the early seasons especially were very valuable because Steve Wilkos really reinforced the necessity of being a good partner in a relationship, being a good parent, taking care of your children as well as family members, as well as your spouse or boyfriend, girlfriend, about encouraging people to be protectors of their families and friends. So there was a good message at the heart and soul of his show. However, there are ways that I can respond all over the map. The first one is that the early seasons of the Steve Wilkos show had a lot of aggressive behavior in them, and I think he's toned it down over the years. I watch mostly the abridged versions on Instagram TV, nonetheless. I used to watch the show almost exclusively on YouTube, but I started watching a lot more on IGTV because they upload like the nine-minute abridged versions. And I saw a YouTuber whose name I do not remember. I only saw one video from her, but she did a response to the Steve Wilco show around season one or two, simply saying that it appears that sometimes the guests on his show are dealing with emotional and psychological issues, and he would get in their face and yell at them and try to almost humiliate them, because not only is he insulting them and telling them that they're the scum of the earth and that they're going to rot in hell, I kid thee not, he's also trying to get the audience fired up against them. And what she was saying is something that I do have to agree with. If their problem was something such as depression or maybe another mental illness, then getting in their face, yelling at them and humiliating them is not going to be the solution. If anything, it would make it worse. This person probably needed a different type of counseling, maybe medication in certain cases. So, there are some ineffective approaches, and Steve Wilkos openly admitted that he comes at it from a tough love approach. He says that it's very good for people, and I think for a lot of the people on his show it is, but I am still forced to agree with that person who pointed out that he was not taking into account how some people could be misbehaving because of a mental illness that is way beyond what he was prepared to deal with. In terms of how he did deal with things, again, he is a very authoritative figure. He was much larger than most of his guests. And it, and Steve Wilkos was not only a former police officer, he was also a sergeant in the Marine Corps. And he would always talk about how these life experiences that he had in the military and in law enforcement allowed him to solve certain situations, or just having that sense of awareness when it would come to domestic disputes, or trying to find out, like, where is the good and the bad side, and who do you need to protect, who do you need to stand up for, and I do commend that one, but to talk about some of the actual points that I found to be truly shocking from the show, number one, it incorporated a lot of lie detector tests, and sometimes you can get fooled. Like, for example, the lie detector polygraph examiner Dan Rebikoff is featured on the Steve Wilkos show, and he was the first person I ever heard to use the term extreme deception indicated. A lot of people come on the Steve Wilkos show and they take lie detector tests, and sometimes I get fooled. Maybe if you've ever watched the show you get fooled too. Like you think, this person's telling the truth, they're not an abuser, and then it turns out that they are. I mean, I'd say after watching the show for about, oh goodness, it's been like 10 years since I started watching, you can get a fairly good assessment of who's telling the truth and who's not, but sometimes you get fooled. That's the first lesson, and it's just scary. It's just scary when you think that someone is coming across as being genuine and they fail the lie detector test. And when they're dealing with very serious things, whether it's abusing children or sometimes it's even something such as rape, 
and that is just like saddening and depressing for humanity. But that's one of the reasons why I think it's important to watch content like that, because I say this very frequently on the channel. When talking about true crime cases, it's not about exploitation. It's about recognizing that these are very real stories. This is the way that many people live their lives. And if we're going to try and improve the quality of life of all people, no matter who they are or what background they're from, then we have to be aware of the problems in the first place. And a lot of people do very destructive things. A lot of people commit very, very heinous actions. And unless we're going to show some type of awareness or we're going to learn how these things are happening, or if we're just going to come tell ourselves that there's a problem in the first place, we're not going to get to a better solution. And the second point is that the show features a lot of lie detector tests, and this is an unpopular opinion, but I actually believe that polygraphs are much more credible than what other people are, are saying. I mean, when I talk to people about lie detector tests and the Steve Wilco show, and maybe some other shows out there that use them, like Ralph does them for the Maury show, Dr. Phil also uses polygraph tests, a lot of people say, that's just for television, that's just theater, those things are not reliable at all, anybody can pass a polygraph test, you just have to be very calm. Now, it appears that in the past, somebody who had psychopathic or sociopathic tendencies would be able to pass a lie detector test, and that was before the invention of the computerized polygraph, and that was done with heart rate, blood pressure, and galvanic skin tension. So someone who was psychopathic or sociopathic would have such uh, limited reactions that it wouldn't uh, trigger anything on the polygraph test. And I'm fully aware that sometimes... Sometimes polygraph tests are wrong. Even if it's like 99% accurate, then 1% is going to be wrong, or 98, 2% would be wrong, 97%, 3% would be wrong, and so on. There's always going to be some error because I do follow lots of true crime cases and I talk to them about you. I talk to you guys about them here on Black Box Online Radio and from time to time, you find out that somebody failed a polygraph test and they become under suspicion by the police and it turns out that they must have been telling the truth because the forensic evidence pointed in a different direction. But overall, I believe that most of the time that polygraph tests are accurate. And the polygraph tests on the Steve Wilco show, as I said previously, were done by Dan Rebakoff, someone who is very good at articulating how and why we should believe the lie detector tests. And what he said was that he uses something called the zone algorithm scoring method. He measures physiological tracings in the body. In short, that when somebody is recalling something from their memory, it has different physiological tracings than when someone is recalling something from their imagination. If they are recalling a memory, it is an experience that actually happened, and if it is imaginary, like if they're telling a lie, then that is imaginary. That is something that they are making up. The brain has to work very differently to create that type of um, reaction, or it, the brain has to work much harder to create something as opposed to simply remembering what already happened. And that leaves a different physiological tracing in the body, which can be examined by the polygraph um, expert. And both Dan and Steve would frequently talk about how it doesn't measure how nervous you are. And most of the conversations that I've had with people about lie detectors and polygraphs say that, oh, well, it's just measuring your nervousness. Or it's, some people say that it's just your heart rate. Other people say that it is just um, like maybe a combination of heart rate and blood pressure. I think that is definitely something that is a little bit more archaic. If anybody watches the show Adam Ruins Everything, he did an episode all about polygraphs, and not once did he mention the zone algorithm scoring method, not once did he mention the physiological tracings. I was definitely not impressed with uh, that episode. However, I do recommend uh, the episode of Adam Ruins Everything about... Um, McDonald's and the uh, hot coffee labels, the story of Stella Lubet, the woman who sued McDonald's because she got burned by hot coffee. I thought that one was very impressive. And the final point that I will share with you is that there are some new kinds of evil in the world. 
that I only learned about from the Steve Wilkos show. And one of them is sexual abuse that is committed by women. For example, Steve Wilkos would always tell people that you should never leave your kids alone with a man. He even says that one of the people who did his security, Mike McDermott, was a guy that he knew for 20 years, and he said he would never leave his kids alone with him. But also on the Steve Wilkos show, they talk very frequently about women who sexually abuse children. And, I mean, I don't see why gender would be something that would be protecting children. And so many times women would get accused of this and they would take the polygraph test and they would fail. And it's not only sexual abuse, but other forms of um, very, very extreme violence committed against children. Like last year I saw the episode where a woman poured um, a camping coffee pot full of uh, coffee onto her, her uh, son, leaving him with permanent scarring absolutely vicious and sadistic acts that are that are committed against children and sometimes Steve Wilkos will cover more famous true crime cases such as the story of Laddie McGee the boy who was tortured for two months by a mother's uh, boyfriend and she more or less turned a blind eye allowed it to happen did not intervene and when the police actually did get involved she tried to make it all about her and there have been other stories monster mom devil mom perhaps some of his more popular episodes. And I just kind of want to stop there because you get a little bit fired up and you also just start feeling a little bit low. But these are real events that are happening. And I don't think too many people dispute that. And there are other people out there who try to draw awareness to these concepts. For example, the therapist turned YouTuber Daniel Mackler did a whole episode on how mothers um, frequently can sexually abuse their uh, children, and some people want to bring that point up, and I'm, I don't even have any data or anything like that. All I am is just someone who watches the show and then finds out that all of those points that I've talked about in this episode all come together. You thought the person was telling the truth. You thought that she wouldn't do that to her own kids, but then it turns out that all the evidence is suggesting that she has. And at this point, I would like to turn it over to you guys. Firstly, what uh, daytime TV show do you watch? Do you watch anything that I've been talking about, whether it's Steve Wilkos or The Maury Show, which is going to be signing off? But there are plenty of episodes that have been recorded and there are, are available online. And then, of course, maybe you watch something like Dr. Phil. Or if there's a different one that I have incited, please weigh in in the comment section down below. And here's a challenge question. Do these shows do more harm than good? And then here's another one. Do you believe that polygraph tests are accurate? And um, for I mean, I, I said all the reasons why I think they are. I'm not convinced they're accurate 100% of the time. I mean, but I think that overall they are accurate. But I want to hear from you guys. I want to read your comments down below. Tell me what you think about any of these questions. And that's all for me now. Anybody can write the show at blackboxonlineradio at AOL.com. You can also get me on Facebook. My personal Facebook is in the description box, as well as blackboxnid88 on Instagram, where you can watch the Steve Wilco show in the abridged version. And I will see you over there on Instagram for the bonus podcast. Until next time.